Okay. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Cranial Anti Mentorship. So I don't know if you know, but there are companies out there you may have not heard of that keep a track of a lot of data regarding housing and mortgages in many parts of the country. So, for example, there's a company called Black Knight Incorporated uh, that's based out of Florida that I think was bought for $13 billion in May. Right. So they're an analytics company. They have a lot of data regarding mortgages. And I first learned about them when I was taking a real estate training um, from a, a teacher who teaches uh, what we call creative acquisitions, uh, learning by real estate with no money down. down. And one of the things that he ta also talked about is that you essentially have to know your market. Like, what is your marketplace doing? And this is where I found out about, you know, uh, the Black Knight Incorporated uh, website. And so they have something called Mortgage Monitor Data Reports. So if you go in here, kind of just do a Google search on Black Knight Incorporated Mortgage Monitor, you should be able to find this website. And they have it on every month, right? So this is the September 2023. They call it the Mortgage Monitor. All you have to do is click the Reports uh, section, right? And so this is kind of a long report, but I just want to show you something that I thought was really, really interesting. So if I click here, another window should open up or it should go to the chart that they have here. And it talks about the most affordable markets and the least affordable markets, okay? So the most affordable markets is where you won't feel paycheck to paycheck when it comes to housing. So you kind of see, see here that, you know, Cleveland, Ohio, Oklahoma, Oklahoma, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, these are affordable markets, right? So these are places where, you know, if you just buy a house, it, it should be okay and you won't feel the pinch. Now, if you look here at the least affordable markets, this is this is what blew my mind, right? So what they do is not only do they list the payment to income ratio, but they also list the payment to income for that market um, tw more than 20 years ago, okay? So take a place like Sacramento, California. Um, uh, right now, people are spending half of their paycheck on the mortgage, okay? But here, 20 years ago, it was comparable to all these other most affordable markets. Same with Nashville, Tennessee. And I, f I feel like the change in Tennessee was very, very recent where, uh, or at Nashville was very, very recent where it used to be probably three or four years ago, much more affordable, but I, that's just a conjecture on my part. But, but take a look down here as to the least affordable market. So 49 is San Diego and 50 is Los Angeles. And if you take a look here, People are spending 70% of their income to pay the mortgage. Like, totally insane. Like, I don't know who would do that, but folks, if you live in Los Angeles, you know, unless you're a cajillionaire, I don't understand. It's not worth it to pay 70% of your, your paycheck just for housing, right? I don't know if you ever listen to Dave Ramsey, but Dave Ramsey always says, you know, take a, you only um, get a 15 year mortgage and spend only 15% or some 25% of your take home pay in uh, for housing. And so if any of these people, especially Los, you know, the Los Angelinos uh, listen to that advice, there's, they would all be homeless. Okay. <laughs> but let's just take a look at some of the houses in Los Angeles. So we just go here. And then we'll just go to realtor.com and see what the houses are selling for these days. So we'll just go here, realtor. And then we have, this is 90024. This is the zip code of um, uh, Westwood. So that's where the, the area where UCLA is located. And then let's just kind of look at some listings. So 155 million, this looks like a multifamily, it looks huge. But I'm guessing if this is an actual apartment, this isn't going to cash flow. But I don't know. It might just be a huge mansion. Uh, here we have a $4 million two-bed, two-bath, uh, 875000 one-bed, one-bath condo. So we got prices going up the wazoo all over. I'm not sure why this one's so cheap. It might be a timeshare. $46 million here, $39 million here, here. Three, three point five million for a three bed two bath. Let's take a look at this today. And there's a hope in house, but so take a look here. Let's just go inside. Looks like your typical uh, suburb house, although it looks pretty nice. But it, you know, is it worth three point? Well, actually, 
the kitchen's kind of bleh, right? Yeah, uh, kitchen's okay. But, but let's take a look here. I mean, the photos are nice, but let me just kind of... Oh, actually, that's a pretty nice bathroom. I like that. But is it worth $3.5 million, right? And if someone in that market is going to buy a home there, would they... You know, are people so desperate to pay those insane prices that they're willing to spend 70% of their income to pay the mortgage? Where's the food, where's the money for like food, groceries, anything else? I mean, is it just on credit cards? Folks, I don't, I'm from Southern California and I've lived in Los Angeles and I have no idea how people live. Like I'm not even kidding. And maybe it's because, you know, at a certain point, once upon a time, I was at the tip of when people were paying a reasonable amount just to live there but to see it go to this this percentage is insane like how do you how do you live there is anybody here like watching this uh video from Los Angeles like how are you able to survive there i mean i don't if if i pay for this house i would live paycheck to paycheck no doubt but i couldn't even afford it either but i have two mortgages and two homes but it's not the way that single family homes work is that's based on the comparable sales. So um, the way that, let's say, when you get appraisal of a bank value, you know, the way, the way that the bank is going to value the home is based on what other homes sold for in the area. And so sometimes in certain areas, you know, this is just going to be going on a, on, a, on a tangent. If someone uh, agrees to pay too much for a house and they're getting a loan, it's not all cash. And the bank looks at the comparable sales and the comparable sales are not anywhere near uh, the agreed asking price, then you probably won't get that loan. So I'm just go here. So this one's a two point one million dollar uh, house. Oh, looks nice, but is it two point one million dollars worth nice? I don't know. And is it worth it to spend spent seventy percent of my paycheck to live here? Uh, probably not. But again, this is why I say like. You got to avoid places like Los Angeles. Nothing makes sense. Even if you're a landlord here, it doesn't make sense, right? You know, some people think, oh, you're a landlord and I got to pay 4000 5000 in rent. Landlord's suffering too, right? And that's why everybody's fleeing Los Angeles. But this is just how it is in certain markets. And, you know, as you're doing real estate or real estate investing, you really want to be familiar with your market dynamics. You know, how much are people paying in mortgages? Maybe here, two or three families are living in the same house. Could possibly possibly uh or it could totally be a possibility right and and that's what's really important in doing real estate investing if you don't want to get burned understand the local dynamics of your market okay and so this was just the most surprising thing hey and you know san diego is to find out it's the second least affordable market is, is insane i heard san diego's gone down to tubes lately uh these days as well okay so uh if you're interested in joining our group, always make a plug. Go ahead and click the link to the Google form uh, below and then send your information. We get on a call and talk one-on-one -on -one and see if you're a good fit for the group. Um, otherwise, if you have any comments or thoughts about this, leave them below and we will speak next time.